I would, I would also, I would also, 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 also today as well, like to dedicate this to my friend Tam, good old Tam, who guided me through my formative years, my plucky youth, <laughs> who showed me what it was all about, how you chat women and how to behave at parties, and, and he told me about antisocial diseases, <laughs> diseases of the willy. <laughs> and I went, oh no! Really? Well, I'm not doing it. <laughs> oh, I'm not doing it. Oh, wait a minute. What? Go to the doctor with that? <laughs> oh, you're not on. He knows my father, your doctor. He <laughs> took me up to Black Street. The clinic. To show me guys going in there. And we watched them all with their duffel coats with the hoods up. <laughs> Reading papers. A paper with a hole cut in it walking up the street. <laughs> Written in the back of his coat, honest, I'm a joiner and I'm working here. And he took me to parties, show me how to behave. We were drinking and chatting women and that, and I had to watch him. But he was a pretty fast worker. He always sort of went up and got a young lady for himself, and then the lights would go out, and I'd be left in my Todd, sitting there. And they put on these Connie Francis and Patsy Klein records. And it was pitch black, and me sitting there. And then they'd start, you'd hear the noises. So I felt right out of things. <laughs> so I just joined in myself. <laughs> oh. Somebody put the light on to see what I was doing. <laughs> Eventually I got myself a woman. I think I fell over on the way to the toilet. But it worked out okay. Oh, that kissing, do you remember that? Three years. My lips were frayed at the edges. My nose was numb. My face was soaking wet. I felt as if I'd been to the dentist. Terrible. And she bit me. She bit my neck. Oh, terrible. I mean, what was I going to say when I got home? I fell. <laughs> you don't understand, eh, Father. Eh, I fell down this stair and I landed on top of this pair of false teeth that somebody had thrown away. <laughs> and from there, I'd like to talk about Partick. Which is my own wee place, and I love it dearly. No, I don't. I moved away from it. You're an awful liar, Conley, when you start. You don't love it. You're a tough soul. <laughs> That's why I moved away, because I loved it. But it's about people, and it's really, I suppose, about Govan, as you say. Because I went to school in Govan, and there was a guy in my class called Constantine. <laughs> And I used to feel terrible sorry for him. If you live in Kelvin Side or Hampstead or St John's Wood, 
You can get away with being called Constantine. Or Gascoigne. No one got me. You are not on. I said, this poor guy had to go through school. And other wee hard cases would come up and say, hey, Jimmy, what's your name and that? It's a pretty stupid question, really. Hey, Jimmy, what's your name? But, <laughs> but they say, hey, Jimmy, what's your name and I know. They said, hey, Constantine. I go, told you that! Those wee mates are all in hysterics, rolling about on the floor, slapping their thighs. So he spent his, his entire school life walking about going, why me? Why me? I was your wood called Shuggy. And I got the idea for this thing I'm going to do from a fellow who told me he was walking through Partick. A scruffy bit of Partick, now that takes a bit of believing. And I don't know, a scruffy, he must have been an explorer, the chap. <laughs> I mean, now it was a red sandstone boy. <laughs> we used to take the ashes to the midden in a briefcase. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, my goodness, yes. Oh, uh, We used to put good things in the midden just to show we were well off. You know? <laughs> oh, I. Uh, and we called it the midding. Mummy, are you in the kitchen? I'm just nipping down to the midding. Oh, none of your rubbish. But he said he was walking past this wee condemned row of buildings. And one of the doors was open. A house. You know what those doors open right onto the street? You can see right into the house. It's just your luck if you're sitting in the lobby with a door open. Go away, you. Counting the blackheads in your thighs. So, <laughs> two, three, four. Join the dots and make a picture, win a major prize. So, <laughs> but this door was open. You see, and all, it was all squatters that were living in the street. You know, they'd just commandeered the place. And you know what they're like, they're like Apaches. Once they live there, it's their place. Uh, who are you doing in my street, you? I'll kill you. I'll mollicate you. So, but this wee kid ran out a doorway. A wee wen, about three years of age, wearing just a wee vest, a wee simmet, bare bum, black knees, black feet, hands and face covered in jam, a crust of bread in the hand, and a sticky up haircut. <laughs> Ofsky, the big bid for freedom, running along the street there. <laughs> it's me, Willie, going. <laughs> <laughs> the wee pointed Willie. <laughs> oh. So he's off. And his mother comes out looking for him. Oh, a real stota. The headscarf, the lumpy headscarf with the rollers. <laughs> the wee doubt of a cigarette in the fingers. Nicotine up with the elbow. She's got a doubt halfway down her throat. The wrap round overall, the peony. Nylons rolled down to the ankles. Her husband's slippers on. The corned beef legs were sitting too near the fire. <laughs> she comes out in the pavement. She says, there's two wee boys playing in the street. She says, Hey, I'm just seen the wane in that. The wee boys say, I miss you, said he has to lang there. She says, I saw it as. 
tired, Odin. Come back here. <laughs>